Hello everyone, we will continue the topic user command. In the previous video, we uncommented the parameter i underscore callback user command. We gave some name in front of that parameter. We created a subroutine with the same to same name. We saw in this particular parameter using parameter of this subroutine hyphen value we are getting the sales document number value on which we are putting the cursor so we fetch the data from vbap table based upon that input we created a field catalog also of three columns I'll just change the name of the first column. The first column is VBELM. I'll just write sales document number. First from VBAP table, we are fetching sales document number, item number, and material number. So I'll just go for same to same name, else runtime error will come. So we are fetching three columns from VBAP table. Now for the best understanding, we will see in the debugging mode, how the logic is working. I will go to execute. I will give the input. Okay. Whenever we will select a record, and click on to this button, user command will call. And you can see I am inside the user command subroutine. I selected the second record where the sales document number is five all zeros two. And you can see in this RS cell field value, I am getting that particular value. We are passing this value from, we all know, we always has to pass the values from right to left. So this will go to, it means VBELN is equal to five all zeros two. It will go to VBAP table. It will fetch the data of these three column and data will come into this internal table. I will execute and you can see if I will open LT underscore VBAP internal table, I have an internal table of three columns and one record is there. Now we will create a field catalog of three columns. Now we are creating a field catalog of three columns. Now if I will show you field catalog internal table, we have field catalog of three columns. So we have a field catalog or we have the data. Now we will bind these two things using reuse AL we grid display function module. So this is your field catalog internal table. This is your data internal table. If I will go to execute, you can see this is our data. This is our data. And this data is from VBAP table. If I will go to back button, now if I will go to back button, I am executing. Suppose I will go for five all zeros one now. If I will go to this button, you can see in desktop three now. In this using parameter, now we have the value is one. If I will go to execute, you can see we have only that item details are coming off that sales document number. Now we have a same, we have a uh, small observation here and we'll see how to correct that. See, first time it is working fine. Now, if I'll go to back button, if I'm going for this second record and if I'm going to this button again, if I will go to execute, you can see Three plus three, six columns are there now. If I will go to back button, if I will select the first record, and if I'm go, going for okay, 
If I'll go for okay, you can see three, six plus three, nine are here now. If I will again select and do some action onto this button, now you will see we have nine plus three, 12 columns are there. It means we have to refresh some internal table. And because of that, it is getting accumulated. So if I will see, if I'll go to back button, you can see, if I'm selecting a record, I'm selecting a record. If I'm clicking on to this button, if I will show you this internal table, LT field cat, still LT field cat one, still it has the previous things. It means whenever we are going again, we should firstly refresh this, then it will be again fill. It, then it will fill again. So what we will do, we'll refresh this internal table so that the columns should not accumulate. So I'll simply refresh this internal table first and then it will accumulate. I will write refresh. I'll check the syntax and I will activate it. If I'll simply run and show the output now without debugging, I will show you now because we checked in debugging. You can see first record, only one details are coming. Second, second is coming. There's no club of the columns because that internal table has the previous records as it is. So what we did, we simply refreshed and then every time it is just going, or it is just accumulate. It is just adding the columns or just adding the rows. Now we'll go for now one or two more points in the user command. Suppose I will go to execute. As of now, we took only one button in the ALV output. We took only one function. In the real projects, we might have to create multiple functions, multiple functions. But we know whenever you will click on to those buttons, you have multiple functions, we know. But whenever you will click on to those buttons, we have only one subroutine is there, that is user command. So how you will distinguish the logic at that point of time? We'll just go for simple understanding. Suppose I'm saying we have this output of the ALV. We have one function display. Suppose customer is saying, I want another functionality save. Whenever user will select a record and click on to save button, I want something else also. Suppose customer is saying, I want one more functionality, suppose update. So whenever user will select a record and click on to update, user bought some different functionality. But on each and every action, on, on click of each and every button, we have only calling area is this. We have only calling area is this then how you will distinguish the logic at that point of time? If you remember when we created the button, I told you that every button has a function code. So at that time, function code will play a important role. Suppose if I will show you in the debugging mode, suppose, if I will select a record and click on to this button, if you remember, we gave the function code of the button as display. If I will open R underscore UCOM, which is the using parameter, you can say it is display. So whatever the functions you will create, every button has a function code. So based upon that, you can write the logic in the if conditions that for this functionality, this logic will execute. For this functionality, this logic will execute. Now, one more point I will show you now. Whenever you are double clicking, whenever you are double clicking on a record of ALV, double click. 
Suppose if I'm double clicking, this is the SAP provided function code for double click of ANB. Sometimes on double click also, we want some functionality. So at that time, whenever you are double clicking on the ALB, this is the SAP predefined function code that is M% IC1. So you can simply write if R underscore UCOM is equal to M% IC1, you can write some logic. So this is real project requirements because in the ALB, sometimes we have to go for multiple functionalities. So at that time, you can divide the logic based upon that function code value, whatever the function code you give to that button. So in the last three to four videos, what we did, we learned how to create our own functions in the ALB, how we can write the logic onto those functions means we covered two important things in the ALB. One is PF status and another is user command. That's it in this video. Thank you.